Welcome to HSE Economics Made Easy. Previously, we've introduced the markets topic, and in our last video, we focused specifically on supply. We explained that quantity supplied has a positive correlation with price, and we also looked at some of the influences on supply. Today, we will look at the concept of price elasticity of supply. The word elasticity is synonymous with the word sensitivity. So price elasticity of supply measures the sensitivity that supply is to a price change. When quantity supplied has a strong reaction to a price change, we call that price elastic supply. When quantity supplied has a weak reaction to a price change, we call that price inelastic supply. A proportional reaction is called unit elastic. When we learned about the price elasticity of demand, we also learned how to calculate the elasticity. But our current syllabus states that we don't actually need to know how to calculate the elasticity of supply. But in case you're interested, the coefficient method from demand works here too. Here's the formula. And again, it calculates the movement of quantity as a proportion of the movement in price. If the coefficient is greater than one, it means a small change in price has caused a large change in quantity, so it's price elastic. If it's one, it's unit elastic. If it's lower than one, it's inelastic. Again, you don't need to know this in the current syllabus. What you do need to know is this. Similar to demand, the elasticity of supply can be observed in the slope of the supply curve. A more price elastic supply would be flatter because as you can see, a small change in price leads to a large change in quantity supplied. It's very sensitive. A more price inelastic supply would be steeper. It takes a large change in price to cause a small movement in quantity supplied because it's very insensitive. Note that you can't use the gradient to calculate elasticity because the elasticity varies along the curve. However, you can use it to compare between different supply curves. And also, there are two extremes that we can recognize straight away. When the curve is completely vertical, supply is perfectly price inelastic. This can be caused by two scenarios. First is if there's an extremely limited supply, such as apartment units in Sydney CBD. There is only a fixed quantity of units and firms cannot increase this quantity no matter what price they're offered. The other scenario is when a producer is trying to get rid of stock and there aren't enough buyers and they're willing to accept any price. A simple example would be an ice cream shop with a power outage on a hot day. They'd have a set quantity of ice cream that they would practically give away before they melt, meaning that it's completely price inelastic. The other extreme is when the supply curve is completely flat. This is perfectly price elastic supply, and it means that producers are willing to produce a constant supply of the product given a certain price. It usually means that the producer is able to expand the production quickly and infinitely. There isn't a realistic example for this because every good and service is subject to scarcity in some form. Again, just like with the price elasticity of demand, the way I remember the difference between the two curves is that when the curve is steeper and more vertical, it's closer to the letter I, and I stands for inelastic. The last thing that I want to cover today is what determines the price elasticity of supply. Here's a list of factors. The first one is production time periods. In the short term, price is more price inelastic. This is because if the producer is offered a higher price, it takes time for the producer to expand the supply especially if they've exhausted their fixed factors. However, in the long term, price elasticity of supply will be elastic because given enough time, they would be able to gather the resources and expand supply. Following this factor is whether the firm has excess capacity. If the firm is not running at the maximum capacity, they would be able to expand the supply when offered a higher price, meaning that they are price elastic. However, if a firm is already running at 100% capacity, they would not be able to respond with a higher supply, meaning that they are price inelastic. The last factor is the ability to hold stock. If the, firm, if the firm is able to hold stock, then they can contract and store supply when prices fall. And when prices increase, they would have the inventory sitting around to respond and expand supply. Therefore, a firm's ability to hold stock makes firms more responsive or price elastic. I hope I've made price elasticity of supply easier for you to understand. Next lesson, we'll be learning about the interaction between demand and supply to establish a market equilibrium. Click the subscribe button as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss any future videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like, comment, as well as share the video too. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.